I've been coming out here since I was a little boy and it's really where I learned all about nature and became who I am. My mom was working, my dad was on the road, so um, there was really nothing to do with me in the summer when I was out of school, so I got dumped out here to be with my grandma. I didn't take it for granted, you know, as a kid, you're just living in the moment. So, I mean, I was super happy out here. When I discovered fishing as a young boy, just with first a cane pole and then, you know, a bass rod and lures, it shut my mind off in a way that nothing else had. Like, it was just this beautiful experience where I was hyper-focused on one thing. I'd never felt that before. You know, our, our fathers sort of set the path for us, whether we choose the same thing or if we depart from that, it's still sort of the, the architecture of who we are. If my dad could have done one thing for me early on when, when he knew I was a, a fishing fanatic, would have just said, hey, T, you can do this, you know? You know, being the eldest son of Towns Van Zandt is definitely a unique experience. Early on as a kid, I had a lot of questions why my dad wasn't around, stuff like that, but in retrospect, I mean, as parents, we're all just trying to figure it out. He was kind of an extreme case, because <laughs> I, I think for anyone who's aware of his lifestyle and what he did and how he wrote songs, uh, I mean, that'd have been a great for some, just a single rambler, but the guy had, you know, had a son at home, and I just wondered, why he wasn't there. My dad was the happiest when he was the most unhappy. That's really difficult to explain. He found sincere magic in the blues. I would go stay with my dad and it would be just this out of control free for all. This sort of manic bipolar songwriter who was living on nothing. With her proud you know, my dad as a father and as an example as a father was terrible. But I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. If his song like sucked, gypsy. then it would have been all for nothing. But he ended up writing some of the greatest American man. literature in existence, all crunched down oh. into, into melodies. But I'm this is probably my favorite photograph in the world, which is a picture of my mother and father, my mother being like ready to have me, and then the Lomaxes and so Sam Lightning Hopkins and his wife. To my singing, cause I'll I didn't understand at a young age that he had chosen a path that was meant for him. Well, I left as a young man, not full. 17 with nothing for company but the wind and a dream I mean having a great mother is one thing but a son needs a father to, to kind of develop that path lay it out in front of him and all I learned about my dad's path is that I didn't want to be that way Let's release this little fella. Don't go tell your friends. Nature was always there. It also, like, stepped back in and provided the answer for me. You know, because that's where I felt like who I was. I had a, a natural place like this to grow up in lieu of having a present father. Finding fly fishing was just like, it all made sense. It was the activity that, that, that meant the most to me. It was when I found it, it was so important to be doing it, to be getting better at it. I thought it didn't exist in Texas, at least in the small country towns where I was. And at some point, it was just like, look, take your experience and what you know and be, and be the best fishing guide you can be. That, that was the end of confusion in my life. All right, Foxy, you ready? And then the boats came into the picture, which just was like, okay, this is why, this is why I focused on woodworking for so long. It was a real gift because then I could put something together that I could actually use for fishing. 
just got such a classic look. The lap straight just calls to me, man. It's so beautiful. I basically dedicated myself to learning how to finger pick as, as a personal show of respect to my father. I learned all of his tunes as a way to, to connect with him. He was, a, he was a boat freak, man. He loved sailboats. He loved reading about the sea. And he never had the chance to do it because he was so locked in on writing tunes. I take a lot of pleasure and satisfaction in sort of leaving that aspect of craft to him and picking up on things that he didn't have a chance to do, like woodworking, fishing. My takeaway from my dad and how he wrote songs was a particular perspective and aesthetic about living. You know, all the words that my father ever told me rang out in nature. I waited a long time. I was in my 40s before I had my first son. And I'm really glad it happened that way because before then I would have been kind of a carbon copy of my father in terms of parenting. Every lesson that my dad taught me was either how not to do it or exactly how to do it. And they both kind of operate the same. All of us in different generation before us, maybe they weren't perfect, they weren't supposed to be perfect. Close your eyes, I'll be here for a while. My whole role in coming to terms with all of it will be to, to pass on the positivity and the magic that my father created and left for me. And I think my dad did the best he could, but the one thing that he wasn't great at was coming home and being happy. I think that the most important thing for a father these days is to just, just show that it's possible to do what you love and be really good at it and then come home with tenderness and affection for them, missing them, and give them everything you've got when you get home, and then start it all again the next day. Figure out what it is that makes you happy, work hard, forget about the rest, come home, and be a good man, be a fucking man, and go to sleep and wake up early and do it again. Close your eyes, I'll be here in the morning. Close your eyes, I'll be here for a while.